everyone. Welcome to the new moon in Virgo. Quick snapshot of the energies around this uh, astrological event. We have the sun and moon in Virgo supporting us in what I call in my podcast, energetic hygiene, energetic cleaning house, becoming extra hyper vigilant around what we're vibrating about. That's the overarching theme, but there's a couple other aspects that are informing this and really making it a little bit challenging, but helping us raise the bar. Uh, Sun and moon and Virgo is square, Mar uh, Mars and Gemini. Mars, the planet of action. Gemini, the planet in its positive aspect of expansion and exploration. In its negative aspect, distraction and incompletion. So we're really wanting to lean towards this feeling of expansion, energetic cleaning house so that we can realize the possibilities that we haven't even thought of. There is another, uh, we have a trine that's gonna help us with this. So uh, even though the sun and moon are square, Mars and Gemini, uh, Mars and Gemini, Mercury and Libra is trine Mars and Gemini. Mercury rolls both Virgo and Gemini. Mercury is a planet of communication. We're talking about our energetic communication. The Libran energy is perfect because it's going to bring everything into harmony and balance. So we're seeking a harmonious, overarching, balanced experience of how we're vibrating, what we're vibrating about, and really being diligent about making those shifts because those little shifts are going to be super powerful in the future. We also have a powerful T square. So there's lots of squaring action. We have a um, Saturn in Aquarius, square Uranus in Taurus. That's been ongoing. That's gonna continue through uh, fall or maybe early 2023. Saturn in Aquarius is interesting. Saturn is structure. Aquarius is where we're headed, the future. So our structures, those energies already are a little bit challenging. And then they're square. Uranus and Taurus. Uranus is reminding us that we are the high technology we seek. Taurus is super earthy energy. Taurus likes its creature comforts, but Taurus is also helping us ground down the new earth. So all the squaring action is really just challenges for realizations. A, a, a T-square has another square, and we have Venus in Leo square both of those aspects, Uranus and Taurus and Saturn and Aquarius. And, and this is lovely. This is that kind of Leo and Venusian is also Libran energy, the energy of remembering that this is, that all is well, that this is a joyful uh, journey and that overarching harmony is where we're headed. But, but the message is really this energetic hygiene. I'll put a link to my podcast. I also want to offer um, an oracle reading for us. So what we're going to do, I'm going to put up an image of three cards and you're going to choose card one, two, or three, which one resonates with you? And I'll put, you can fast forward to the, the time in this video, or you can watch the whole thing, but you're just, this is just a message surrounding this new moon. All right. So card number one is titled, well, let me give credit to this. This is coming from the Pure Magic Oracle by Andres Ingracia. Which is wounds is the first card. Interesting when we consider energetic hygiene. So this is about the cauldron. Our body is a cauldron. The hearth is a cauldron. Our use of magic and really considering what remedy do we seek. And this card is reminding us that we all were human. We live in this 3D world. We live in an astral world of light and dark. There are wounds. We all have fears. And this card is reminding us to not fear a life with pain and to instead fear a life with no growth. So really to embrace any of the wounds that we've experienced and to look at them, embrace them as, you know, where the bone breaks is the place where it grows the strongest. And this cauldron, there's the, there's the four elements in this image. So we have cauldrons require earth for balance, fire for heat, air to breathe, and water to stir your power into. So you might create an alchemical cauldron during this new moon, but you might just consider this. The message here is that you are the vessel, and your experience and your heart 
are here to serve you. The heart is our most powerful energetic space. It's our transmutation, transformation. This is signaling it's a cauldron. It's a cauldron of power and change. So you might imagine creating a psychic crown of golden light and placing it on your heart center and giving yourself the message here is you're worthy of healing. You're worthy of redemption. You're worthy of everything you want. You're worthy of peace. You're worthy of love. And also this is a message that all things are carried out in the right time, in the right process to get out of linear time and questioning when, when, when things are going to happen, but to go within and to know, to be a part of this healing transformation, transmutation, that your, your wounds are your powerful spaces to explore in this life. All right, card number two, this is fabulous. Drawing down the moon. So drawing down the moon, this is, with this deck in particular, it's talking about, you know, modern witchcraft, but this is something that the Egyptians did, that the Greeks did, that the Mayans and the Aztecs did. It involves uh, having a, someone who's a channel, so very likely a, a priest or likely a priestess, because Luna is a feminine energy. And drawing down the moon means drawing that energy, channeling that energy, speaking it out to another, to a circle. If it's witchcraft, it's covens. But you know, if you're in Egypt, it's the the initiates. Uh, so you're you're harnessing the goddess's guidance. And this is great because the message here is that there's a lot of strength in the appearance of stillness. Appearance of stillness. Remember, Luna is always moving. She's always waxing, she's always waning, but also she, she moves at her own time. And so again, this is interesting. This is a, a, a reminder of trusting that our intuition will light up as, as it needs to. Right timing. And also, this. <laughs> <laughs> the stronger message is do not second guess the higher order of things, the nature of things, to deeply trust, to walk your path, to trust the lunar cycles, to trust the cycles of life, and to know that as you walk your path, light will lead the way. Mm, I love that. Final card number three, mantra medicine. Ooh, I love all these. Maybe they're all three for you. <laughs> they feel like they're all three resonating with me. So mantra medicine, the power of spoken word. If we're thinking about energetic hygiene, man, the power of the spoken word is just, it's one of the earliest forms of, of natural magic. And if you think about it, you know, when we, are, when we first come into our these bodies, the first cry of a little infant is signaling to everybody around it, here I am. The power of sound, the power of our words. And this card is reminding us to realize that our, our energetic intention is so important. Our words are neutral until we fill them with intention. That's how we can read through the words of something and get to what somebody really means. This is this type of awareness that we're being encouraged with this card and in, in this new moon. So, you know, how aware are you of your words, both the ones that you speak, as well as those images and those things that you are floating around within you? And also how the, the questions here are how honest and truthful and unafraid can we be of our truth and our voice and our power. So there's, you know, the idea don't feel afraid to express yourself, but also law of right timing, know when not to speak, know when to turn within, know when to harness and take ownership of the, the feelings that you're carrying and the words that you're speaking. There is a time to be silent and there is a time to speak. All right, I hope this was helpful. I am gonna put up the next image is, uh, I'm starting another, the next class is starting uh, just after this new moon on botanical mediumship. I'm teaching mediumship, which is connecting to loved ones across the veil, uh, all sorts of magic, the ways that we use divination. Tarot can be mediumship, but this is using it's botanical mediumship. So we're, we're really gonna be exploring the plant kingdom and uh, working with plants and herbs to support ourselves in opening up our, our third eyes and connecting to all the spirits and the energies and the information that's available 
available to us across the veil. So uh, this class can be taken as a single class. There's another course that you can take with it that will, uh, I'm gonna teach it again since it's already full, but Awakened Dreaming, which is about lucid dreaming. So if you're interested, I'll put a link and tons of love and happy new moon. Thank you.